is that you can use phrases like low key and world series together <laughs> because you never have a vested interest in it. This will last for about another six weeks. Yeah, no cheap applause line. <laughs> Had to take my shot at it. So anyway, I was living in Staten Island, New York, right next to Chicago. And, <laughs> and uh, my wife and I, my first wife, again, had a fight about something. God knows what. We fought all the time. We barely made it three years. And somehow she decided that the best way to get back at me was to go storming out of the house, taking the car, but before she walked out, she grabbed the television remote and took the remote control with her. <laughs> Again, my game plan was watching the fucking World Series, which is only on one channel for the entire fucking night, and I was never going to need to change channels. <laughs> so she was not very forward then. So I'm like, okay, great. She took the remote. I don't care. Channel's on. I'm going to have something to drink, watch the ball game. A friend of mine calls me up. His name's Danny. Danny says, hey, Frank, we're going to go over to Tom's house and watch the World Series. You want to come? Sure. But I don't want to go empty-handed. you got to stop, and I want to pick up something to take with. Okay, cool. So we stop, and I get a case of Michelob, which in 1988 was a ball or move. And, and that was craft beer back in the Reagan era. And, and, uh, and a bottle of Monte Alba. So we get to Tom's house. The Michelob is cold. We Toss it, I guess, bucket of ice or bathtub full of ice. I don't know. Doesn't matter the point of the story. And I start working on beer and working on mezcal. And the night is progressing and the ball game is progressing. And I wind up pretty much just flopped in a chair where people keep bringing me beer like I'm King fucking Farouk. And, and it winds up that I pretty much am just. I'm holding the bottle of mezcal the entire night, giving it mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation all night long. By about the seventh inning, I lost her, <laughs> including the worm. And we were talking about how the agave worm, oh, yeah, you're going to have visions, man. You, you ate the worm. Like, yeah, OK, great. I'm going to have visions. And probably about the end of the eighth, I'm just pissed drunk at this point. And I'm barely, I'm like speaking Esperanto. I'm not even speaking English anymore. <laughs> and so we get through the game, into the bottom of the ninth. Oakland's ahead. Dennis Eckersley, one of the great relief pitchers of all time, is coming into pitch. And the Dodgers' best player all year was Kirk Gibson, who hadn't played in the game because his knee was basically like being held together with band-aids and potion stamp hinges and just could not function. And me, being the drunk who is now going to have visions, fucking Eckersley, he was a cub, he fucking sucks. Gibson's going to hit a home run, win the fucking game. Gibson's not even playing. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. None of you guys are arguing with me. You guys sat down. <laughs> So, sure enough, Gibson comes in to pinch hit. It's like, holy shit, Frank. It's like, He's hitting the fucking home run! I'm clearly a baseball fair one, which is why I'm here talking to you because of all the millions I've made wagering <laughs> on baseball. I'm not just a million, millionaire dilettante drunk storyteller. But anyway, history will tell us what happened that night. History will tell us that I can't change the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Technology is great when it works. Did, did you take the remote? I took, that is the remote. That's the remote today. Yeah. Anyway, Gibson hits the goddamn home run. Becomes part of his legend. It's galvanized in baseball history forever. There you go, man. There he is. Fucking bum Jesus. <laughs> so, Gibson hits the home run. Now everybody's like, Oh, Jesus, Frank, man. What else can you do? <laughs> like, the 
don't fuck with me. <laughs> don't you fuck with me. Give me the remote. So now I had a remote. And the party, the, I mean, it's one of these things. The ball game ends, and, you know, people are still hanging out, still drinking. I think there might have been a bit of poker game going on. I don't know. I was just in this recliner. Every few minutes, boom, change the channel. Playboy channel. And it's just nothing but naked flesh. And this would go for about three minutes, and somebody's girlfriend like, God, Frank, change the channel! Back to something else. A uh, couple more minutes, Playboy channel again. God, Frank! This went on for about an hour. <laughs> Somebody finally decides, after an hour of me being like derelict Hugh Hefner, it's time to get me home. So I get me home, I go to sleep. Next morning, my phone rings. It's my mother. Very religious woman. To this day. Like, she's every I cannot have breakfast with her without her trying to save me. And I'm not kidding. So she says, What time are you coming over? Come over for what? You're gonna cut down these trees in my backyard today. You said you were gonna do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Fred! <laughs> Don't you take the Lord's name in vain! Shit, mom. Fred! I can recount this conversation perfectly because it's the exact same fucking conversation I've had with my mother every time we talk for 40 years. <laughs> so, I have to stop at the grocery on my way to her house, get like every fucking drop of Gatorade in the store, and get over to her house and get these two of a peach tree and an apricot tree, so you could save the question on that one now. And I get about, I use a handsaw because there's no fucking way I'm using power tools. So, boom, 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 boom. cut down, this, cut down like an eye level, the tree falls. Boom, 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 boom. Cut down to about, you know, there's a little bit of a stump. And they're fruit trees, so you can pretty much just rip them out with your hand from there. New York City Ordinance says that you have to chip the trees when you cut them down. There's no fucking way in my state I'm gonna run a goddamn wood chip. Mm -hmm. My mother's next door neighbor had one, not doing it. Fortunately, my mother's back fence butts up against the one and only train that runs on Staten Island, the Staten Island Rapid Transit. So all I have to do is get the trees, the wood cut into small enough pieces to where I can military press it over my head and get it over her damn fence and let my tax dollars take it from there. <laughs> so, we have visions. I, I started the day as a vision, started the night before as a visionary, ended the next day as a hungover lumberjack. And that is my story. And thank you all for listening. Frank Noble, ladies and gentlemen! You know, I, I miss the days when mustaches like that were okay, you know what I mean? When Tom Selleck was popular and shit. Alright guys, any questions for Frank? Uh, did the remote have a cord on it or is it like a, a red? What's that? Did the remote have like an actual cord on it or is it a, a wireless? Oh no, it was wireless. It oh, wow. was already wireless. Well, it, did, it was a remote for the cable lines. Oh, okay. Wait, televisions used to have remotes with wires? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Well, VCRs had remotes and wires. My grandfather had a remote control that had like two ports. What the fuck? Yeah. In fairness, like, if you gave someone who was like 15 a fucking tape, they would have no idea what to do with it. So. <laughs>